Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. So this is what we're going to be creating today. It's a very simple um, setup in Phoenix FD in 3ds Max. Um, it's just a regular emitter on top of this phone. So this is a beginner tutorial. I'm going to show you how I, um, you know, light it and, um, and the settings that I plugged in. Basically, the settings are mostly default, except I added some surface tension and I played with the rendering settings for the motion blur to make it the right amount. So I'll show you how I did that. So let's jump into Max here. This should be your starting scene. Uh, I'm using an iPhone 10 as the object, but you can use anything you want. Uh, you know, I made this around the time that the iPhone 10 was announced and came out uh, and I just thought that the display illuminating the water looked pretty good but again you can use literally anything for this so as always go to unit setup make sure that your units are metric centimeters and that one unit is one centimeter this is gonna be the same for all of my videos so if we sort of measure this phone here it's about 30 centimeters long. So it's, you know, about maybe two times, three times bigger than it is in real life. And again, I do that just to get more detail because generally speaking, you're gonna get more detail out of the liquid simulation, um, you know, if you're dealing with, with bigger objects. All right, so you wanna go to standard cylinder, make a regular cylinder like that, this is gonna be one of our emitters. Then you wanna make it an editable poly. Select this polygon and make it ID6. Then hit Control I and make the rest some other numbers. So I'm gonna do five. Um, you can hit G to hide the grid and then select the entire element of the cylinder emitter and copy it because what I found is that um, you actually need two emitters in order for the liquid to be equally sort of flowing across the whole surface. I started with just one emitter in the middle and the water didn't reach the edges. So I'm using two emitters here. Uh, I moved them close to the phone because what I found is that if they are high up like this, the water starts falling, falling down and gravity affects it so it keeps getting faster and faster and then the splash is you know too strong so if you just put it pretty much like really close to the phone the water will just slowly beautifully flow around instead of bouncing around and splashing so let's rename this our emitter emitter and then you can go to standard creation panel phoenix of d liquid sim I'm gonna bring the grid back and just do something like that you want it to be pretty tall um just you know because the water will be falling down here um so you can go under grid and adjust the z axis to make it as tall as you need Maybe it doesn't need to be as wide. And it doesn't need to be as thick either. And maybe even less like this. And again, if you are a beginner in Phoenix FD, do not ever scale the box like this. This will just completely mess everything up. The only way you should be ever modifying the size of the box is by dragging these numbers over here just like I am doing right now so for now you can leave the cell size at around 0.35 you know about 2 million particles is what I like to do just to run some test simulations and um, now we're gonna go under dynamics and in case you guys are curious how I'm recording these tutorials I have two monitors 
So I have the finished scene on my other monitor. I'm just looking over, um, you know, what settings I put in everywhere. So gra for gravity, I put 0.8. Um, just because I was going for a slow motion effect and I didn't want the gravity to be too strong. It also helps to, you know, keep the liquid calm and not have it splash all over the phone. Steps per frame, I did four. Again, if you're just testing things, you can leave this at one or two. Then you want to raise it up for the final simulation. For the time scale, I did 0.1. This essentially slows things down by a factor of 10. Um, so I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, and then the most probably important thing that I had to play with is the surface tension. So I really love how the liquid wraps around the phone before it sort of is broken away from the surface and falls down. You know, if you were to lift surface tension by default, the liquid would just slide right off the phone right here and fall off the edge but i really like how it's wrapping around the phone and that's affected by surface tension so the value that worked for me to achieve this effect is 1.3 you might have to play with it a little bit to find a value that works for you or you can just leave it at zero but i did 1.3 then you want to go to uh you can skip foam skip splash Output, obviously, just put in the folder where you want your liquid data to go to. So I'm going to say right there. And for your output, output grid channels velocity, you have to check this to get motion blur. If you don't, um, it will not render with motion blur. So this is a crucial step here. So again, under output, output grid channels check velocity and then under rendering although we're not gonna we're not ready to render this yet but when you are um, this is how you affect the motion blur down here under rendering and I actually set the motion blur multiplier to 0.3 just to get you know it, it basically affects how how much blur you get so I want it just a little bit. It actually looks almost better without any motion blur just because it's sharp. Um, but again, I did 0.3. And uh, so now we have to do the actual emitter for the liquid. So go under helpers, uh, Phoenix of D, uh, liquid source, drag out a liquid source. Let me look over what I did here. So for the outgoing velocity, I did 10. I did zero noise. And then crucial step, you have to choose polygon ID 6. Uh, I've talked about this in my previous videos, but again, it just means that the liquid will only be coming out of these two bottom faces and not the entire cylinder. Okay, so we have polygon ID 6, outgoing velocity 10. Uh, this is just max is autosave and then crucial step don't forget to add the emitter under emitter nodes in order for everything to work so then you can just click on the on the simulator here go to simulation and start and you can see our liquid is slowly coming out you can barely see it but it's there I can do show mesh so this is super low res, but it's working. And the only thing you would do at this point after you tested everything and made sure that, you know, everything's working and moving at the right speed, you would just go under grid and reduce the cell size, meaning raise the resolution. What I did for my final uh, simulation was around 100 million particles, 95 million, 0.1 centimeters. It'll take two to three hours to render, depending on what machine you have, uh, but still pretty fast. And then this was my final scene. So you can see you get these streaks of water uh, because the detail is there. And I can even 
you know, lower the detail reductions. This is, this is the, the simulation as it was finalized. Then I added some lights, just regular V-Ray lights, 2.0 multiplier. I always like to put one light brighter than the other just to make it look like it's in a studio, I guess. And a few more lights and that's it. And once you render it out, you know, you're gonna end up with something like this. Um, you know, I put the camera, I put the camera like here, like that. And then you wanna right click on the emitter, go to object properties and uncheck renderable. I'm not gonna go over the rendering settings. There's a lot of tutorials for that, but I rendered it with regular V-Ray and uh, regular V-Ray water material. And then I did very little post-production on it. I just added some curves to make it pop and that's it. So thank you guys very much for watching. This was a quick one. Um, this is the fifth video in my Phoenix FD tutorial series. I'll try and keep making these for, you know, as many little tips and tricks that I can give you. So uh, if you like the content, I would appreciate if you subscribed, like the video, you know the drill. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.